Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. And welcome to two brands going head to head. We've got the Sotar by Badger, the 2020 Slim, and we're gonna put it against the Creos PS771. Price brackets are big on these guys. The 771's coming in at 300 pound. It's a 0.18. It's a top cup airbrush. You've got the Mac valve to the bottom. Basically the sort of characteristics of the Micron to the front end. Long sort of body, nice comfortable brush, nice chrome finish on these. Build quality is really good. And we've got the Sotar 2020, which is new to me. I used this in yesterday's video. This is on a 0.2, so you have got a smaller needle and nozzle set up in the 771. So usually you would think it's going to get down a lot better on detail than this. So we're going to put a 300 pound brush against a 128 pound brush. We're going to do some lines, dots on the 771 and on the Sotar. We'll do a little bit of shading on the 771 and shading on the Sotar. We're going to use the same paint mix for both brushes. We're going to use the same air pressure on both brushes and just see how they perform and see which one I think is best. So let's get into it. So we're going to start off with the 771 and you'll notice instantly with the two brushes, I've noticed it straight away. The 771 is a lot quieter. I'm just blasting some water through on this. Just move this over a tad. Right, we've got the paint mix. We've got a bit of golden high float acrylics. Now hopefully that's picking that up. Just going to get used to this brush again because I've not used it for ages. We've got paint coming straight out, so just set the needle in again. Right, we'll go straight in on the shading. Bottom circle, we're running 20 psi, and as you can tell, this is a lot quieter. Now, the 771. Atomize is really nice on shading as you can see. Very, very soft on that. Trigger on these are nice and responsive. The feel of the brush is really nice as well because you've got your nice slope here. I've always rated this brush from when I got it. Excuse my dodgy shading on this. that drops the paint down really nice. So shading and atomization on the 771 is really good. At this pressure, we can drop this down. We'll just do another little line underneath and it still atomizes really nice. You can, you can hardly hear, hear this brush when it's running. Do some little tiny dot work and this brush does get seriously down guys on lines. So you get your real fine hairlines on the 771. <clears throat> If you are going in on sort of, if you're doing sort of models and things and you're right up close on sort of 3D prints, I would say the 771, the cup would get in the way. If you're into like 3D prints that have got like arms and things on them and you're getting right in close into integral bits, I'd say that would get in the way for you on the 771. But other than that, it's a brilliant brush. It really is, I can't knock it. Price-wise, these have shot up in price. When I got this, I got this cheaper, uh, but they're now at the 300 pound mark. So it's a lot of money for a brush, but it's a brush that gets the job done. It's got brilliant on detail. It's comfortable. The trigger's nice and responsive. The only thing I don't like about it is the cutaway on the back body. I'm not a big fan of cutaways on the bodies. And I don't ever use these dials to dial your trigger in. I think it's best to learn an airbrush and learn the full length of that trigger. Then having this do it for you. So I don't use that. I don't like the cutaway, but everything else on the brush, really, really nice. Work with the crown cap off. 
on this always. So that's sort of the 771. I can't fault it. Brilliant brush. If you are looking at getting a detailed brush, they are excellent brushes. So we'll move over to the Sotar. Now I'm gonna plug this in at the same air pressure and you will instantly hear the difference. You hear how loud the Sotar is? It just tends to be a lot more, the air just seems to get through this brush a lot quicker and easier. So we'll drop the same paint mix in. Now you've got a tiny scallop on this, so you can get a few drops of paint in. Now the beauty of this brush, you've got full view. So if you are working on something really intricate and detailed, you've got the view of the whole piece you are working on. You've not got a cup in your line of sight. The trigger on this, I prefer on the Sotar than the 771. It's a more comfortable trigger. The actual brush build, there's not much in it, guys. I mean, one's a black finish, one's a chrome finish. The 771's a little bit heavier. The Sotar's a little bit lighter in your hand. So we'll go for a bit of shading. Now this pressure does seem a lot higher in this. But again, this Sotar atomizes the paint amazingly when you look across the two. It really does. And it all goes on the trigger, guys. I would say the trigger on the Sotar is way more better than the 771 for responsiveness on where that paint's coming out because you can get absolute minimal paint with this brush. You really can. It's just a more responsive trigger than the 771. It really is. And this pressure can come down. Right, I'll do some tiny lines and again matches the 771 on down guys getting down really does there's no difference in it one's a 0.2 one's a 0 0.18 I would say the Sotar puts the paint down, I would say better. Yes, the 771's a softer feel, and I think if you looked at these two spray patterns of mist with the dark background, the Sotar would be a little bit wider, and the 771 would be a little bit more closed in, but the way the trigger is on the Sotar is just incredible. It really is. I just find it an easier brush. I mean, that is getting seriously down for a 0 0.2. So it all goes on your pocket again, guys. Um, I've brought these brushes, <clears throat> none of these have been like given to me. I've, I've brought these brushes along, along the line in my career. And I absolutely love the 771. It's a brilliant brush. You can't knock it. You really can't. It it will get you them details down. It really will. It really will. But it's when you then go on to other brushes <clears throat> and you see other reviews on brushes because I would have never brought a badger. And it was after seeing some reviews and the comments, I picked one up. Wife brought me one, and after trying it with this trigger, the triggers are just phenomenal on these Sotars. They really are. I painted yesterday with this for five hours and it was just a joy to paint with. I had no tip dry with this setup on the needle. It was just, it just performed for the whole five hours straight and I was working in a warm environment. I had no dramas with paint clogging. It was easy to clean and it was nice just to be able to put a couple of drops in the front of the brush, work for five to six minutes with a couple of drops and then stop Top it up and away you go. I do notice when I use 
big cup airbrushes, you always tend to put way too much paint in the cup. You overfill it and then you end up, you never end up decanting it back into your paint pot. You always end up throwing it away or blasting it through into your filter and you waste paint, I think. With these, they make you a little bit more user friendly with your paint and they slow you down. And that's what's good about airbrushing. A brush that sort of slows you down instead of speeds you up because I'm quite a fast painter. I just think it's a win-win. I really like this bit here. This piece is loose. I haven't tightened this piece up, but what I find with the bottom part of the sotar, because I tend to, I'm a left-hander, I tend to, my hand sort of angles on the brush sort of round. And with using that, leaving that loose, that, goes to the shape of my hand on how I pick it up and it just feels really comfortable when you're holding it and spraying with it. It's just an excellent brush guys. So for the price, Sotol wins hands down the Sotol wins price wise all day long out of the two brushes. Trigger response, Sotol, getting down on detail, they're the same. You'll find, as I say, when you go up close with the Sotar, you do feel a little bit more air coming back out of the brush, but this thing needs to be, needs to be ran really low pressure. I mean, I can turn this down some more. Right down. And it still atomizes beautifully, it really does. That's really low pressure. And it just it just works so for me out the two if you're going on price and you want a cracking detail brush Sotar wins it hands down for me it really does but if you've got the money and you want to blow 300 quid yes the 771 is brilliant I mean I've had this two to three years now and it is it is an amazing brush it really is for what you get it's a nice build quality, so I can't knock it, but that does it for me, that one. It really does. It's just such a nice brush to use. It really is. It works. So that's my review on the Sotar and the 771. Drop your comments, because I know a lot of people are going to have different thoughts on these two brushes. But my personal opinion on how I paint and the way I paint, I'm preferring this one at the minute. I really am just for the trigger response alone is just incredible on these guys it really is if you've not tried one try one and i guarantee you'll drop the comments and go oh my god the sotar trigger is unreal because it is it's a really nice designed trigger comfortable to the top the slope on it is absolutely bang on for your finger it just instantly feels comfortable to work with it really does and you've got full view and that's what it's about you can see everything. You use the 771. If I use the 771, I usually work at an angle, really angle it so I can see sort of here. If you're looking straight down it like that, if you paint like this, you're blocking a lot of your artwork with the cup. So that's my thoughts. Drop your comments. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers. Cheers.